we welcome you to the ADHD Smarter Parenting Podcast. Here to heal and elevate lives is your parenting coach, Kimber Peterson. Welcome back to the podcast. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about effective praise. And I'm going to put it right there in the title, but I'm kind of running an experiment in the background. I'm very curious how this is going to line up with our listening numbers compared to other episodes because so many parents come to us wanting to know how to respond when their child is acting poorly. And when we take the first step of starting with effective praise, instead of starting with correcting behaviors or effective consequences and and other lessons that we teach, parents are often thrown off. So I'm very curious to see, is this an episode that people will seek out if I just label it effective praise? Or is it something that we'll get a lower viewership on? Because This skill is critical and fundamental towards creating change. If you are a parent that is looking for answers and trying to figure out what do I do when my child does this, effective praise is actually one of the best places for you to start. We as parents spend a lot of our time and energy giving our children um, direction and redirection and counseling and and support and all sorts of different things. And it's a tough gig. (laughs) It's a lot of work. And Honestly, many parents are struggling with the exhaustion from trying to clean up negative behaviors and just get through some of the challenging things that we have to deal with as parents. You're going to put the energy in. And if you're tired of putting the energy in cleaning up the mess and if your child isn't accepting consequences and you're just exhausted from trying to do something that's going to create a change, you're spending a lot of energy on the negative stuff. Take a break for a bit. Take a break for you and for your child and just focus on the positive. And that's what this skill is meant to do. It is meant to help you redirect and start looking for the positive. And a couple things happen when you do that. One is for you. In in Smarter Parenting, we talk to a lot of parents about how we're here to coach parents and we can effectively change your child's behaviors by doing that because The change from your child doesn't come from forcing them to make a change or a difference in what they're doing. The change in your child actually comes from you as the parent changing the environment they're living in. So if you start to shift things over from being a really negative environment to being a really positive environment, your child starts to follow suit and they'll come along with you on that journey. It's pretty remarkable the change that you can see by increasing the amount of praise that you're doing. And your child will feel that and they'll be more motivated to make change. Now, depending on how your child is doing right now, I've seen this take hours or I've seen it take months. (laughs) And so it's not quite clear on how long you need to make this investment. And and if you want more guidance on that or more feedback on that, you can reach out to us and do a coaching session so that we can help um, kind of guide you through that. But, But it is an investment, right? This is an upfront investment where you are putting energy kind of on the back end where you're cleaning up the messes and the chaos and also on the front end where you're trying to get ahead of it and you're praising um, and you're doing your best to really help turn things around for your child. So I often say you're doing the work, <laughs> may as well make it enjoyable. So if you're going to do it, then then do the upfront stuff because gradually you're going to see over time that your child's extreme behaviors or negative behaviors start to reduce. And we've seen it over and over again. Um, lots of kids with different diagnoses or different trauma histories and and we see that happen on a very regular basis. So there's some science behind this. Let's talk about that because I'm always interested in the research and the science that makes it different. You'll notice that in this episode, I've been referring to it as effective praise. Now, that's critical because I'm not just talking about praising your child, saying good job or nice work. Effective praise is actually meant to be very specific and it's going to be effective in teaching your child. We're focused on teaching, learning, effectiveness, all of these things. And the focus is not just on generally throwing praise out there. It has four steps. So step one is to show your approval or find the positive. So state what you're seeing that's that's going well. Step two is to describe the behavior and be very specific. So in this, I want you to explain to your child exactly what they're doing correctly. So not um, not even something as vague as good job being nice to your brother. It could be something like, wow, I'm really impressed. Just now you told your brother, whatever he told him, quote it back to them. And that was really kind. So be very descriptive and specific in your explanation. So if they're unloading the dishwasher, you could even say something like, 
I appreciate you being careful not to touch the tops of the silverware and just moving the handles. That shows that you're being cautious and keeping our dishes clean. So step three is to give them a meaningful reason. Now, this meaningful reason part is a rationale that is applicable to them. It's not necessarily applicable to you. So as a mom, my house gets busy and messy. And so if my kids put their stuff away, great. I appreciate you doing that because then I don't have to. But that is not a meaningful reason to my child at all times. Now, your kids are each going to have their own value systems and their own interests. And what I like to do with this this meaningful reason step is tie in the things that are important to them and tie in our family values that I want them to be mindful of. So some of my meaningful reasons might be things like it shows that you care for the home that we live in and that way it's a more pleasant environment for us to all be in, right? Because in our family, we value having a clean and neat home. And so I want to tie that in, but I also want to be mindful of, of what they have in mind. So with my younger children, I might say something like, you're really taking care of our home, which makes it cleaner and nicer. And then your friends can come over, right? Those kinds of things that just help them see what's in it for them. Step four is to give a reward. And this one's optional, but I want you to broaden your perspective of what a reward is. More often than not, our relationship is a reward. So smiling, high fives, um, taking a couple of minutes to just chat and talk or giving them a hug. Those kinds of things can be really rewarding. Now, if we're talking about something that's really exceptional for your child, maybe they've been working on lying for a long time. They're working on being honest and not lying, and you notice that they're honest in a situation where they may have previously struggled. So you praise them, and this is an exceptional thing, right? This is a new thing. So in that reward, you might do something even greater, like staying up later for bedtime because they've earned trust or those kinds of rewards that are really going to go above and beyond just a hug. So we've broken the science down into these four simple steps and using these steps is going to make it so that your praise is more effective and is changing the environment and teaching your child. This is a very simple to use skill. It's something that's available to you at all times. So you need to pull this out at all times. So be bringing it up frequently. Remember that your child is needing support and encouragement often, right? Not just when they've done something that's really above and beyond, right? That one truthful statement in the sea of lies. Uh, but honestly, you're you're doing it, um, you know, spontaneously all throughout. Lying is actually probably one of the hardest behaviors for parents to start to wrap their heads around when it comes to effective praise, because it's one of those things where we just expect them to tell the truth. Like, that's just the baseline. <laughs> I expect that you tell the truth at all times. And then when you don't tell the truth, that's when my attention is really drawn to it. It can be hard to make the shift so that your attention is drawn towards when they do tell the truth. And that's going to take some effort on your part. You're going to have to look at the situation differently. And that's a good thing to keep in mind with all of this. You need to change your perspective so that you're looking for the good, even in times where it's hard to find. Another time that's really hard to find the good is in failure. When your child really struggles with something, they come home and they have an F in their class. Find something in there that's positive and praiseworthy. You have an F, but you have 100% attendance. <laughs> So I need as a parent to go in and praise that attendance and start to shape that because I'm going to make a lot more progress by saying what they're doing well at and adding one more step and adding one more step rather than telling them they need to completely turn things around and they're in a bottomless pit. The next thing to watch out for is some insincere praise. So be careful that you're not being sarcastic with your praise and that you are being genuine whenever you're giving it, that it is a meaningful interaction because this isn't just about what you say, but it's about how you say it. And it really comes down to the relationship. Your child is going to be more motivated to make positive choices because they have a positive relationship with you rather than being afraid of just the consequences. So if you start to turn that positive into something sarcastic and negative, you're just working through a cycle of negativity. On the other end of the spectrum, you also want to be cautious not to be too extreme in your praise. So really going over the top and how you're praising your kids also isn't helpful. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should really hold back on your praise. Honestly, the families that I work with often have a harder time increasing their praise, and it's rarely a concern that we need to decrease their praise. You ideally want to be praising your child, I mean, depending on their age, eight positive praising interactions versus every one correcting or negative interaction. 
So if you're needing to reprimand or correct your child frequently, then you've got a lot of praising to do to catch up to that. And so getting to eight praises for every single one correction, it's quite the feat. And so I rarely have families where I'm needing them to tone it back. I think some parents get worried that their child is going to be um, too driven by outcomes, right? Too driven by the A's. I need to have an A in every single class. And of course, we want to praise the effort that goes behind that. But you just need to tweak your praise so that you're focused on the principles that you want your child to learn. Maybe it's not about winning or being the top of their class, right? Those things are cool and exciting, maybe motivating to a degree. But if you're really praising them on a frequent basis, then you want to be more focused on their efforts and their intentions and what they're putting behind it. And so I would just tweak your praise so that you're not being too extreme in saying that they're perfect or over the top or, you know, top of their class 100%, right? It puts on a lot of added pressure. They'll then generalize to put on themselves in other contexts and can become problematic. One thing that I hear a lot, and even if you go back and you listen to our last episode, it was about, um, you know, I've got a problem child and an angel child. Many families have a child that behaviorally meets expectations and is just flying under the radar doing well. And they've got another child that is swooping up all the attention with their negative behaviors. And as parents struggle with that, they say, it's easy for me to praise the, the easy child, right? It's, e it's easy for me to see and notice the things that they're doing right. But keep in mind that if they're doing those things right, they may not be the challenge for them. Our kids each have separate and unique challenges. And so your quote unquote easy child may actually be struggling with just different things that aren't as behaviorally visible. Be mindful of that child's individual needs and strengths and their areas for growth. What are they working on? It may not be table manners. It may not be turning in their homework, but there might be something different. So find what challenges them and praise them for that rather than praising them for meaningless things that come easily to them. Another thing to keep in mind with your praise is to focus on things that your child can control. Avoid things that are, you know, a specifically gifted or special ability. Um, it, this kind of goes back to, you know, really praising your child for being number one in their class. They don't have control over how smart or studious the other children in their class are. So your focus should be more internally motivated on them and what they are capable of as an individual regardless of the competition. So if I've got a child that competitively swims, yes, we're all thrilled for the gold medal. That's really great. But my praise, the, these interactions where I really praise my child, I'm going to be focused in on the, the values and the attributes that I want them to learn as they go through this swimming experience. Less on the gold medals, because that's exciting in and of itself, right? Great job, and we're proud of that. I'm not going to be dismissive of it, but I'm not going to be excessive with it, because my focus is going to be more so on Last time, this was your time for the 100 yards, and this time you beat that, right? You had internal competition with yourself. This is something that you had your personal best and you brought it up um, rather than, you know, comparing them to things that they can't control. They cannot control how fast the swimmer is next to them. They can only control how fast they are themselves. Now, as a parent, you've got two options when it comes to praise. You can focus in on things that your child needs praise for. Or you can focus in on things that are easy for you to praise for. And in those two options, you always want to choose the one that's going to focus on your child's growth and improvement. So there are things that we as parents want. Notoriously, parents want their kids to eat vegetables, for example. If your child is really great with eating vegetables or they're really great with reading books, and these are things that we want them to do, I will still praise them for that. But again, that's not where my emphasis lies because there's other things that challenge them. I'm going to adjust that praise to fit where they need to be challenged. If they struggle with social situations, then I'm going to praise them for times where they make an effort or they try something new in those social situations. If they struggle with attention span, I'm going to praise them for times that they you know, do stay on task for a, an expected period of time or they're able to cope by keeping them, their hands busy or something like that, but still staying attentive and listening. So we've gone over the skill of effective praise, and we've talked about the different tips of what you should do and not do as you use it. So let's just wrap up with a final takeaway. For today, I want you to go home and to sit down with your co-parent or spouse or by yourself and make a list of 
what things your child is good at and what things you'd like them to focus in on working on. Make your list and and then categorize it so that it's brief. So, for example, I have a three-year-old, and what isn't he working on right now? (laughs) He's working on a lot of things, but a a major category for a lot of the things on my to-do list with him, come back to how to accept feedback. And so that's one of the things that he's working on, and I praise him for when he does accept feedback. Now, that sums up several things on my list and avoids it from being, you know, two paragraphs long and, and makes it so that it's a little bit more concise. Find two or three different areas that your child is needing to work on and improve in, and then focus your praise into that. Take a minute to reflect on times that you do see them doing that. For example, if I have a child that's working on lying, when are times that you do see them telling the truth? Now, you might need to stare at that page for a while, and if you really struggle finding anything that your child does in that category correctly, then I'd encourage you to sign up for coaching so that your coach can help walk you through that. But try sitting there and just working out a list for yourself of different things that you think they do well in that category and then consider times where they could work on it. You as the parent are fully aware of a lot of times that they're going to struggle with it before it even comes up. For example, I have lots of parents that tell me my child struggles immediately after school, right before bed, and you know can list off several circumstances or time frames where their child is going to struggle. So consider some of that. And then use the skill of preventive teaching. You can listen to that in a different episode or find it on our website and prepare them for those moments. Then when you come across that time frame and they do it correctly, use effective praise, tie it in, really reinforce that because then you're really kind of teaching them to keep that up and making sure that it becomes a habit that continues rather than a one-time occurrence. Hopefully these tips were helpful and keep on listening as we go through and break down more skills in upcoming episodes.